and welcome to Live in the Solution. I'm your astrologer and tarot card reader here with your readings for November the 11th through November the 17th. Um, if you're new, welcome. I really hope you enjoy these readings and that you'll come back. Um, and if you are returning, thank you so much for your loyalty and your support. I really appreciate you. Thank you for your likes, comments, shares, and for all the new subscribers too. Um, now, these are general readings, guys. They are for the collective. So please take what resonates and leave the rest. Um, they come in three sections. The intro, which is this, the astrological report, and then the tarot reading. And there are skips uh, timestamps below in the show more section. If you have a phone, it's a little arrow pointing down, click on that. And all the information is in there. It's also for your sun, moon and rising. So you will find the links to the other videos in uh, that section too. Um, so listen, as I said before, it's for the collective, these readings. Um, so if you would like a more tailored, in-depth, personalized reading, um, please click on this link here, which will take you to my website and you can look at the kind of readings that I offer. Um, what else? Yes, I have a Facebook group, guys. And that Facebook uh, group, it's a private group. You have to ask to be, um, to get in to be included. And um, that link is below too. Now, in that Facebook group, it's a really positive environment. People post positive things. And then every two weeks, I do a live feed specifically for my uh, Facebook group. And in that, it correlates, every two weeks, it correlates with the new moon and the full moon. And we look at how anybody who attends the live feed, we look at their horoscope and how they're a receiving the energies from the new moon or the full moon respectively and we I also have tarot cards on the hand and I answer questions we hang out for about an hour and we really enjoy ourselves so if you would like that this the link to that will be below also so check that out and um, another way to support this channel and my creative content is through Patreon. So you can click on that just to check out my Patreon page. I do post things on Patreon that I don't post anywhere else. And I want to take this opportunity to really thank my patrons. Thank you so much. Um, you really uh, help me out. So I really appreciate you. Uh, now, what else? Yes, let's go to the astrology report, shall we? Hello and welcome to the astrology section of your reading for November the 11th through November the 17th. And wow, that's all I can say. <laughs> we Listen, the full moon in Taurus on Tuesday is only the tip of the iceberg. We have all this, this dynamic uh, celestial sky this week, some really wonderful aspects are happening this week. Now, um, I'll start with some of the exact aspects and when they're happening, and then I'll go on to what's going on with the full moon. So Monday, November the 11th, the sun is conjunct Mercury. That means it's right next to Mercury, right? Very close. Tuesday, we have the full moon in Taurus, and we have Mars um, sextile Jupiter. That's a beautiful um, harmonious aspect going on there. Wednesday the 13th, we have Mercury trine Neptune. That's also a lovely harmonious connection between the two planets. And Thursday, November the 14th, Venus is square Neptune. That is a challenging as aspect. We also have other energies and aspects that are moving into place or moving out of place. So they all have play a role, actually, um, in the celestial sky. So let's start with a full moon in Taurus, shall we? Um, the full moon, as most of you know, is when the moon is opposite the sun. And it's actually the sun's reflection that illuminates the moon. Um, so with the moon in Taurus, this, and that means with the moon in Taurus, the sun is in Scorpio because they're opposite each other on the uh, wheel, right, in the chart. Um, the moon is exalted in Taurus, which means that it can express itself fully. 
Um, so the moon is nurturing, magnetic and um, feminine. Um, and in Taurus, the moon is good natured, generous and loyal. Um, there's a tendency um, for being um, emotionally connected to one's values and uh, material possessions um, and a strong need for security, right? Material security. At the same time as this full moon, um, the moon is in a harmonious aspect to Pluto, Um now, this creates an energy of sensitivity and intense emotional feelings. Um, it's of being absorbed with interpersonal relationships, of being coveted over one's uh, emotions and feelings. We want to kind of hide that. We don't want that out in the open. Um, and, uh, oh, at the same time, I am... Um, displaying the chart of the full moon so maybe you can follow along with some of the things that I'm saying um, and you can get a picture of what's going on too uh, for those of you who understand uh, charts. Now um, so it brings in it brings in intuition and psychic ability. This this uh, the moon's relationship um, with Pluto, um, and it can give you a strong look. It's being sorry. It's being able to read people um, and recognize inauthenticity. Um, we can see through people. You know, we know when someone's not being authentic. Um, so and. And it can give you a strong will and focus uh, to accomplish goals um, with which to manifest your dreams. This is like a dream creating full moon, right? We can create our dreams. We can manifest our dreams. We can make them real. It can also bring in up control issues. So we need to be mindful of the urge to control situations and or people. It can be expressed through us being a bit bossy, perhaps, you know, during this transit. It is also worth mentioning that the moon at the same time is kind of in a loose, harmonious aspect with uh, Neptune, which further enhances our psychic and intuitive abilities. Um, it can also give us a really deep appreciation for music, art and uh, nature. We also need to be mindful not to sacrifice ourselves for others um, and keep a, a firm grip on reality because Neptune can skew our perceptions uh, of what's really going on. Um, however, Saturn is connecting harmoniously to Neptune and to the moon. So there is some structure and um, discipline to bring ideas into tangible creations. So um, we just want to make sure that we're not uh, compromising ourselves for others. Um, and we, if we focus on our creativity, we can really bring things to life. Um, now, the sun in Scorpio is right next to Mercury which brings in creative thinking and energetic communication um, with a bigger picture view. So because Mercury is still in retrograde, there can be some misunderstandings, but they can easily be rectified because of all these positive, wonderful aspects that are going on. Um, now, the Sun and Mercury have a harmonious uh, also have a harmonious connection to Pluto and Saturn, somewhat to a bit lesser of a degree, um, which brings in the um, need to be recognised for one's accomplishments, you know, for being in the spotlight. And the concentration is on speech and communications yet again. So this sets the stage for shrewdness in business and negotiations. Now, that's a wonderful aspect. Um, and then listen, that's not all. The Sun and Mercury are also harmoniously connected to Neptune, bringing in 
um, creative and visionary talents. So it's amazing for literary accomplishments, particularly writing, fantasy, poetry, or even in the visual arts. Um, any creative project will, you know, take off and will really work. So now also... <laughs> I'm finish it, guys. Mars is sextile Jupiter. Now, this is a wonderful, confident energy, abundant energy. It's like we're energized, right? Feeling really excited and confident about ourselves and, you know, really good luck in materialism with a penchant for higher learning or spiritual studies and alignment, perhaps. Um, and, and long distant travel. Can, is also on the table with this aspect. Perhaps you're going on a long trip or you're planning one. Um, you may be contemplating a spiritual retreat even in a remote location. Um, so an optimistic nature with a love of freedom and independence is the underlying um, beautiful energy of that aspect. Now, then on Thursday, we move into Venus square Neptune, but all these aspects are kind of happening all week simultaneously, right? So it's kind of a big mishmash. You have to kind of choose um, your, you have the power to choose your energy and how you want to direct it. Um, now, Venus is square Neptune, and that's a challenging aspect. It brings in issues of self-esteem, confidence, and insecurities. So if you have a poor self-image during this transit, you may have a distorted view um, of your partner or, you know, your date if it's a new or, you know, your acquaintance if it's a new relationship. You may see relationships in an odd way. Um, perhaps you have an idealistic romantic storybook vision um, of your of relationships which can lead you to ignore red flags when you meet someone new um you could get taken advantage of um become a doormat in a relationship if the relationship is rocky already if it's on firm ground i think you'll be able to move through this aspect pretty um unscathed um but if it's new and it's a bit rocky then uh you know you could kind of, um, you know, become the doormat or worse, you know, allow inappropriate behavior in some way. It's important um, to practice acceptance um, and the love of oneself during this time, you know. And I would be, look, at this, this aspect also creates a heightened need for love and affection. Um, so, I would resist the urge to commit or to trust someone until after this transit. Focus instead on building self-esteem and self-respect and confidence. All right, guys. So I told you that's like major this week, right? So um, without further ado, let's go to your tarot reading, shall we? Hello, Virgo. Welcome to your tarot card section of your reading for November the 11th through November the 17th. What wonderful gifts, guidance, blessings and helpful information can you give Virgo for this coming week? Okay, please fill these cards with love, abundance and hope. Three cards for Virgo, please. Three cards for Virgo. Three cards for Virgo. Oh, there's two. I want to make sure they're two. Yes, lovely. Oh, there's crossover. There's a card that's come in a lot. Okay, one. Oh, that's it. <laughs> two cards that have come in a lot. All right, Virgo. Let's go to your clarifying cards. These are clarifying cards for Virgo. What wonderful gifts, guidance, blessings, and helpful information. Oh, let's do that. Can we give Virgo for this coming week through these clarifying cards? Please clarify. There's one. Please clarify. Oh, 
And please clarify. There we are. All righty then. Let's take a look at your cards, Virgo. All right. The first card out for you is the King. Oh, let me do it that way. The King of Wands. Sorry, Cups. The King of Cups. Clarified by the Judgment card. And then you have the Five of Cups. Clarified by the Death card. Then you have the Queen of Swords. Clarified by the Eight of Wands. Okay. Okay. Virgo, the first card out for you is the King of Cups. He's sitting on his throne. Look, he's a brilliant, um, you know, king. He's a brilliant leader. He really wants everyone to do well. That's his goal in life. And he's sitting on his throne with Saturn right above his head. He is the cup, so his emotions, right? He's got a well of emotion deep within him. Um, but he believes that he must remain stoic in order to be a good leader because he can't allow his emotions. He can't, he doesn't want to be, um, uh, and it, listening to people's problems and crying and being in emotion. He wants to remain stoic so that he can give um, rational and practical advice to people. So when he comes in, I'm saying that, yes, you've got to feel your emotions, but don't allow your emotions to kind of get the better of you. Have some self-discipline and know where to allow them out to play you know, so to speak. And look, right underneath, you've got the judgment card. And this, darling, is Pluto. Pluto is playing a huge role this week in the celestial sky. Um, Pluto digs deep and brings stuff up, stuff that we need to handle, but we need to handle them rationally and not emotionally. And perhaps we meet someone and you know, we dive in the deep end because Pluto's very like deep feeling, emotional, and we might not, you know, we might not see some of the warning signs kind of thing. But also Pluto is about um, intuition and psychic ability. And I'm, I'm getting that. I am getting that you to to trust your gut feeling but when things are being brought up because pluto brings stuff up for us to handle we must handle it and i don't want to say dispassionately but in a way yes you know with balance and rationality and um fearlessness and um so handle it because it's the right time. Sometimes truths are being revealed to us during this time. And that could be through our intuition and our, you know, be guided by your gut feeling, your instinct. Don't second guess it, uh, Virgo, at this time. And look, you have the five of cups known as crying over spilt milk. There is, I'm feeling that you are, um, in a place of disappointment and perhaps regret, something has not turned out the way you planned it or the way you wanted it to, you know, perhaps, you know, things have not panned out in a, in a way that's, you know, it's, you're disappointed. And, um, you have three cups spilt on the ground ahead of you and you've got two cups behind you. This is about you're focusing on what's gone and what, you know, what hasn't worked out. And in doing so, you are kind of in a hallway right now. And you have a door behind you that's still open. And you're waiting for the door in front of you to open, but it cannot open until you firmly close the door behind you. And firmly closing the door behind you is letting go of what hasn't worked out, right? It's just letting it go. Close that door behind you. There are new and more interesting things ahead. And this is about looking at your cup as half full instead of half empty. You've got two cups, right? 
you're going to be okay. They're two golden chalices. That's, you know, it's okay. It's enough. Let go of what has not worked out. Let go of what's disappointed you and move on. It's about moving forward. And I'm saying that because you have the death card clarifying it. And the death card is all about death, the death of the past and being reborn for the future. So this, the death card is all about being in the hallway. It's a transitional period almost, right? And it's transformational. So you are going to really change. But if you're hanging on and just focused on, this is called crying over spilt milk, right? You've got the milk spilt. You can't get it back. Just, you know, have your little moment and then just let it go and close the door. You're in the hallway. A new, more exciting door is about to open. This is a transformative time in your life. It's a transitional time. It's about you being empowered and moving forward. Um, I think that this can be very exciting, but you must firmly close the door on the past. So there's something that you're hanging on to and allowing it to, you're keeping that door open. And if you don't close it, you're not going to be able to move forward, you're not going to transform your life or yourself or, you know, improve your life. You can't change it. This change is um, immense for you. There's a lot going on and you are not, um, you are kind of in that place of um, transition where you are not letting go of the past. That's it. You've got to let go of the past and to move on. And the next card out is the Queen of Swords. And she's an opportunity. She could be a business opportunity, but she's also the seeker of truth. So it's about seeing the truth in the situation. What, what do you need to look at right now? What is it that you need to acknowledge? Um, you may have had a fixed idea of something and not, but you need to kind of open your mind and you need to search for the truth within. Search the truth in yourself. And I'm saying that because you've got all these opportunities that are coming in. This, These are like fast energy coming in and they're looking to land. They could be landing at your feet, but if you're focused on the spilt milk, you're not going to see these opportunities. You're not going to be able to take advantage of these opportunities. And, you know, this could be a nice, um, an unusual business associate, or perhaps somebody that you are going to collaborate with on something. Um, somebody you may not normally do, but it's going to be very advantageous if you do, because she's an astute businesswoman. She's giving you an opportunity, you know, several maybe. So this is about you closing that door to the past and being reborn and coming out and, you know, taking advantage, full advantage of life, if you will, right? This is passion. This is fast energy. This is lots of, this is busy, busy in a good, busy way. It's a good, busy way. It's not a self-sacrificing um, busy that you may have been in in the past, you know, that's not satisfied you and doesn't make you feel good. And it's, you know, it's, it's gone. Let it go. Move on. Move on to these wonderful, incredible opportunities, darling. You know, stop focusing on the spilt milk and lift your head up and look at the two cups you have left and be grateful for what you have. Look at the haves as opposed to the have not. See your cup as half full as opposed to half empty. Virgo, thank you so much for tuning in. Please don't forget to like this video, share it with friends, family, neighbors, co-workers, social media. Get me over. I'm almost at 10K, guys. <laughs> Let's see if I can get over this week. Yay. And um, comment. I answer every comment that also helps my videos get more watched, uh, more, you know, uh, more, what's the word I'm looking for? Anyway, more recognition, perhaps. <laughs> and um, if you haven't already, please subscribe. Mwah! I love you all and I'll see you next week. Bye.